Welcome to Diversity Matters. This program is designed to highlight activities throughout New Hanover County Schools and the greater Wilmington region that celebrate diversity and inclusion. Diversity Matters has long been a staple of New Hanover County Schools TV, allowing us to celebrate, educate, and support the diverse community we live in. New Hanover County Schools has taken a strong stance against racism and district educators and administrators have been working intensely to create a more equitable environment. In today's segment, we will speak to the students that we serve and hear from them on the work that they are engaged in surrounding equity and how the district's work is impacting them. When I return, we will be joined by two New Hanover High School students who are members of their school's equity team. Women Heart is in a race to save lives. Heart disease is the number one killer of women. It's 80% preventable if you know the facts. Millions of women are living with or at risk of different types of heart disease, like AFib, which is a type of irregular heartbeat. It affects both women and men, but women with AFib have a higher risk of stroke and death than men. Get educated. See your doctor. Know the facts. Diet and exercise are key to staying healthy. Know the risks. Women Heart does something really unique, solely focusing on women and providing peer-to-peer -peer support. To win this race, we all have to do it together. Our hearts beat as one. To learn more, visit womenheart.org. Chance high five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and her. I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at the shelterpetproject.org. Welcome back to Diversity Matters. I'm Caress Clegg and joining us here today, we have Leslie Conseco and Shantia Dockery. They are both uh, New Hanover High School students and members of the equity team at New Hanover High. Thank you ladies for being here with me again today. So I just wanna know, um, start us off with what does equity mean to each of you? Yeah, so equity means to me not only giving an equal chance to everyone, but also equalizing those opportunities and ensuring success for all people. And to me, equity is like a measure of achievement, fairness, opportunity, and education, giving them that fair chance. So um, back in March, New Hanover um, County Schools, some of our teachers, Ms. Nobles and Mr. Jones, set out to start our equity teams. What made you guys decide to, to join the equity team at New Hanover? What made me join the equity team was the fact I didn't want to continue seeing students being treated unfairly and not given equal, equal opportunities like others in the school. Yeah, um, I definitely thought it was such a cool idea considering I've never heard of one, not only at New Hanover, but just in New Hanover County. So I was really excited to be a part of that. And also just being a representative of a lot of Latinx voices at New Hanover because we're made up of such a diverse group of students there. Awesome, glad to hear. So we'll, did you both join it in March? Yeah. Yes. So we join in March and then we go to get out for COVID and then a couple other events happen in the country. We have the murders of Amand Aubrey, we have the George Floyd and then Breonna Taylor. What's going on in you guys' minds as you're seeing all of this unfold on TV, seeing the protests and even some in our town here in Wilmington, what were your reactions to those? Yeah, I can go first. Um, so I think what I felt first was just like a lot of shock because it was such a, like a foreign thing to me. Um, I am like a part of a minority, but that it wasn't directly affecting like Hispanics and Latinx, but it just still felt like such a shock and such of like, how could this even happen? And I think a lot of what I felt was also anger, just realizing that this has been going on. This is a problem that's been continuing over decades, but that the public has just now, or my generation has, is just now really experiencing the repercussions of such like violence and police brutality. Yeah, as she said, I was very shocked at first because 
I didn't really get to why they were killed and the reason behind it. But what also made me angry was the their, the people that had ended their lives, causing their families to lose a daughter, an aunt, you know, overall granddaughter. They weren't sentenced to a fairly um, sentence behind bars or anything. And they didn't receive the justice they deserved. So I was quite angry about that. So uh, looking at that, what are ways that you're coping with that? Or what are ways that you, you're seeing maybe your peers and friends cope with some of the outcomes of this police brutality against black and brown um, citizens in our country? Well, we have often invoiced our opinions about the situation. We joined the protest that was going on down here. Once they got too violent, we knew our boundaries going to the protests. Yeah, I definitely think one of the first steps we took was just talking about it, especially after the initial, like, um, the one that I was most familiar with was George Floyd. And like, after that happened, just opening up discussions, even between my friends and I, because it's not something that's light of conversation that you kind of talk about every single day. So when something like this happens, you know, you have to take advantage of that, that opening window to discuss something as important as police brutality and just racial relations. You mentioned talking to your friends about it. Were there anyone else who you talked to about any of that? Any of did did you get any response from educators in the district or from um, your advisors in the equity team? Yeah, so we did a couple discussions in March through the summer about just everything, not only COVID but just also race relations and and stuff, um, social events that were occurring over these past couple months. And it was definitely like a lot to talk about them, just get an educator's perspective or because I feel like sometimes talking to your parents, it's a little uncomfortable or maybe you just don't know how to start the conversation or bring it up, especially um, to a parent. So talking to an adult, getting an adult's perspective and advice was definitely really helpful to just gather myself and know how to cope with these events and know where to go on from there. So overall, you, you feel that educate, it's important for educators to have these conversations with you and to engage the students, and that was helpful for each of you? Yes. All right. What are some inequities that you yourself have faced in your life, whether they be at school, um, personally? What are some things that you've experienced or that you've seen friends or family members experience? Well, yeah, at one point, I haven't experienced any inequalities, but with my brother, they, I have, there's been many times where my brother has been racially profiled just for being the brown colored skin boy he is. He, there are some times where he hang out with his friends and police will come up to him and say he matched the picture of a person they were looking for. But as you look at the picture, my brother looked nothing like the person, but they still have brought him in and, and gave him so many questions for something he didn't even do. My brother, he, he stays in the house like all the time. So I wouldn't consider him to being a danger to society or civilization in here in Wilmington, North Carolina. How about yeah. You, Leslie? yeah. Um, some of the inequities I've faced, I think being a person of color just in higher level classes like AB classes or even honors classes, you don't see many um, people that look like you around you. And I think up till like high school, I didn't really meet any other like Hispanic or Latinx students that I could relate to that were in the same classes I was in. And so definitely I felt like disadvantaged at like not having someone that I could relate to in those classes or someone that I could confide in because we share similar experiences through life. And then also just a moment that stuck out to me is I remember one time my mother and I were at like a Dollar General. I was just buying stuff for, I don't remember what we were buying, but we were racially profiled as well. And the lady, she refused to, to check us out in line. And I think that really stuck out to me because, at, and I think that was when I was like nine. And at such a young age, you get so traumatized by the, these events and you don't really realize that this is something people deal with all the time. How has joining the equity team at New Hanover High School helped you to kind of work through some of those inequities and situations where you've experienced racial profiling with either being able to have that conversation or being able to know how to react to, 
to those situations? Yeah, so I think definitely just um, first and foremost, just starting the conversation. I think sometimes it's so hard to even work up to being open to discuss a matter like um, race and inequalities. And then also just being able to talk to not only the educators, but also the peers that also, or are kids like you experiencing maybe the same things and having such a diverse group because um, New Hanover is so diverse. And I think just representing representing all of the, the, the people and all the groups at New Hanover. Anything to add to that, Shantia? Yeah, I feel like joining the equity team at my school has really brightened the idea for me about what's going on in our school system and the district, how students are being treated unfairly and different and everyone should be treated equally. It has really opened my vision on how things should really be. And then we have time for one last question. So I would just like to know, what would you like to see more from your schools, from your teachers, and from the district overall when it comes to the conversations on equity and race relations? I would like to see the teachers and district become more aware of the problems that are going on inside of our schools and address it more so that students are feeling comfortable with coming to school and not feeling like they don't belong in the class they are in. Like everyone should be treated the same no matter what race they are and no matter what anything is. Yeah, I definitely think conversation is key. Like just incorporating them. I know necessarily you wouldn't have a conversation in math about history, but just being able, being teachers being open to discussing matters like this, especially when something as drastic as um, a murder happens or something that's been happening over these last couple of months. Um, um, being open to discussing them with their students and creating a safe space with the students, but also um, just acknowledging more of um, a cultural diversity. I feel like um, we don't do enough, even though we're predominantly Black school for Black History Month or Hispanic Month, month which is this month. I think just more appreciation of those diverse cultures and um, acknowledgement of those would really help. Thank you both Leslie and Shantia for coming in today. The district serves nearly 27,000 students, and it is vital that we include the student voice in the conversation surrounding equity. It provides insight and a lens that will only help the district to grow as we move forward. Thank you again to the members of the New Hanover High School Equity Team for leading the conversation. When we return, we will speak with the educator advisors to the New Hanover County Schools Equity Teams, so don't go away. As farmers and ranchers, Stewardship of the land comes naturally. You leave it better than you found it, so future generations can enjoy a way of life that you love. Thanks to your efforts, we're fortunate to experience clean water, abundant wildlife, and healthy rural communities. Your work is vital, and its benefits extend far beyond your property reaching millions of other Americans who depend on this region every day without even realizing it. You take care of the land because it's the right thing to do. But did you know that conservation can also improve your bottom line? Take a moment and find out how conservation pays. Visit conservationpays.org. And we're back to continue the conversation surrounding equity and the student voice. We have New Hanover High School English teacher, Ms. Nobles, and Murray Middle School social worker, Mr. Jones. Guys, thank you for joining us. It's great to have you here. I just spoke with a couple of your members with the equity team, the student equity team at New Hanover High School. So I'm glad to kind of get your voice in now and talk to you guys. Um, first, just um, start me off and tell me you're both members of the district equity work group. Why was it an important and for you guys to join that work group. Awesome. So, Caress, as soon as I heard that the work group, the equity work group was starting, I was super excited. Um, I've devoted a lot of my life's work to cultural competency, um, culturally relevant instruction. And um, when I heard about this, I said, I've got to be a part of this. I want to share my experience, my teaching experience, um, and my life experience in this group and hopefully make some good waves um, in our schools. Mr. Jones, how about you? What made you join the equity work group? 
Yes, as, as it relates to me, um, the, the equity work group, the student equity work group. The equity work group, the um, educator one. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. The equity work group, absolutely. Um, a lot of the situations were arising, um, being that I am African-American, um, it is only natural that many times certain questions come um, um, to me, whether it be from staff or from students. So because there were things that needed to be addressed, because there is um, a culture that exists here um, in Wilmington, in our, in, our, in our town, in our county, in our school system, um, many people are so uncomfortable with the conversation. So because I am not, because I am from here, I thought it the perfect opportunity to get in and to help um, implement change, not force change, but help implement and um, make it a little bit more practical for everybody. So that was the reason why I got involved with the work, equity workforce group. Wonderful. And I too, as a member of the equity work group. I, so I remember when um, Dr. Smith was talking to us and we we're talking about there will be different task force and subcommittees within the work group that will work on certain areas. And both of you actually decided when she asked about who wants to work with the student voice, you raised your hand and volunteered for that. Why did you decide to take on the student voice aspect? Well, now that, and I apologize, that's what I originally <laughs> was assuming you were asking. I, I absolutely wanted to be involved with that. Um, oh my goodness, student, our students um, here in New Hampshire County are much more culturally aware. Um, they're much more aware of the times than sometimes the adults give them credit for. So some of the conversa conversations that students have had with me that they initiated um, lets me know that they're concerned, but don't always know exactly how to address a conversation, either it be in the hallway, either it be um, um, in their cliques, their, their friends, their um, clubs or classrooms. So when this opportunity um, arose, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to continue doing um, what I've had to do for years. Um, it's just a perfect opportunity. Yeah, and for me, I, I saw so much untapped potential in our students. Um, and specifically to New Hanover High School, where I've been my whole teaching career, I saw that these voices, stories, and perspectives weren't being shared. Um, they're shared in my classroom. I ask students all the time their, their opinions, their perspectives. I try to use that to drive instruction, but I really wanted to be the one or one of the ones to facilitate um, their voices, those untapped voices really being heard. So how long has the equity team at New Hanover High School um, been formed in formation? So we started with New Hanover High School and Ashley as our two pilot schools because Mr. Jones works at Murray, so that was a direct fit, and then I'm at New Hanover. And I believe we started, our first meeting was in March, as soon as we evacuated the schools for COVID. So, so it's fresh, it's new, it came about at a uh, at an interesting time. So we're slowly developing um, what we're having the students do, how we're, how we're training them, how we're getting their voices heard. Um, but yeah, so I guess it's been since March. Okay. And what have you learned from the students in that time? I will uh, say, um, oh, Mr. Jones, you go, take it away. Are you, um, uh, I definitely would like to hear what Abby would say, but I would say that they're, they're much more in tune than I had already experienced on the middle school level. Um, and in actuality, they really were looking for um, a chance, an opportunity, a platform to express um, um, not necessarily their um, disgruntledness or, or things of that nature, but their concerns. And they wanted to have a better understanding and they wanted to know why in many occasions um, the adults weren't speaking up, the ones who they really depend on, um, or why they weren't speaking up sooner, or why they weren't speaking up loud. Uh, that that was obvious from the very first time, wouldn't you say, Abby? Oh yeah, and they know, and just I've learned they have more than enough ability to be advisors on this work. Um, they provide insights to decisions in all of our meetings that we've had so far. They provide the best insights to decisions, their concerns, and and I've just been. I know this is a teacher, but sometimes you just forget that their insight is invaluable. And they do, they have more than enough ability to be advisors on policies, um, procedures, the way we run our schools, curriculums. They, they have that ability. 
All right, so that goes into our next question about what are some of the benefits that the students are getting out of the equity teams at both Ashley and New Hanover High School. So you mentioned um, being able to kind of provide their, um, their be advisors for policy and procedure. What are other benefits that these students get when they are part of your equity teams? Right now, I guess I'll start this, Mr. Jones. Right now, we're, we're realizing that these students, they have um, they have the ability, but we need to teach them how to use that ability. So right now the students are going through training. We've had um, Dr. Sheldon Equins with the Leading Equity Coalition come in once and he will come in again to train these students um, on what equity means because a lot of the students, equity, this is the first time they've, they've heard this word. Um, and so it's, they know it, they feel it, they understand it. And so it's really awesome that they have the opportunity to really learn about how to use their voice. So we're doing a lot of trainings on that, just small group conversations about how they feel and think. Um, so, so yeah, the benefits are right now, their perspectives are being heard, they're encouraged in their learning, how to, how to really share those perspectives in a productive, meaningful and um, in strong way. Are there plans to grow the equity teams? I know we have a new Hanover High School when you mentioned um, Mr. Jones, you're at uh, Murray, but you have the one at Ashley as well. Are we wanting to branch them into other high schools throughout the district, maybe some of the non-traditional high schools and then further also into our middle schools? Is that something we're looking at? Well, yes, absolutely. Well, actually, um, um, Abby and I, we, we also work with um, Casey Smith and with some of the students that she had coming from Myrtle Grove, and I had a few from Murray. So um, they were um, rising ninth graders. So toward the summer, we met with them, I believe in June, um, and they had a chance to speak with Dr. I want to say his name right, Dr. Akins. Um, earlier you asked what was one of the benefits. One of the benefits is um, if, if we look with all that's going on right now, our social climate, um, one thing that I haven't heard many people say is that it's very important to show students how to speak out, how to do so appropriately. Um, um, and having said that, when we started the kids from the middle school, many of them, when they separated, uh, many of them went to, most of them went to Ashley, some went to Hoggart. So we're still in touch with that one or two, one or two students. Some, one went to SeaTech, um, another went to another one. So technically it has already branched out into the other high schools and we just need to build on that. So um, I would imagine Abby and myself and possibly Dr. Smith or someone else from the Equity Workforce Group will be making contact with those administrators asking that um, they bring in a few more kids. I mean, we've, we've been working on this, Chris, you know this, for several months. Good, good, I'm glad to hear, hear it. Um, we'll be moving on and growing at other schools. It is definitely a great benefit just listening to what I heard the ladies talk about earlier. I can see the need for this at more than just two of our schools. So I can't wait to see its growth. So we talked about the equity team um, and the student aspect. Let's talk about you guys, your spaces and your classrooms, your office. What does equity look like in your classroom and in your office? Mr. Jones, would you like to go first? No, I'd rather you go we first. Were about this <laughs> earlier. We were just talking. We were just talking about what this looked like in your office. Oh my goodness. What does it look like in my in our office? Well, for one, um, I'm a I'm I'm not a teacher, but I am an educator. So but I work in student support services. So the counselors and myself are always trying to make sure that students have access um, um, to their education and that there's no barriers. Um, socially, academically, so on and so on and so on. Um, so what does it look like? It looks like it's getting better. Um, um, I know that's a little bit of a, of a tangent, but um, again, everyone's becoming more aware. Teachers are doing PLC groups, um, making sure that equity is always at the forefront um, of the conversation. Um, it's, it's getting better, especially for New Inver County Schools, I would say overall. and with us doing the student groups, of course, you see it's trickling down to our students. Um, it, it's, it's interesting. You already had certain students who were outspoken, um, but I think you got another wave of students that are coming through that are, are not gonna just be outspoken. They're gonna be prepared and they're gonna be articulate and they're gonna be intentional in everything that they say and do for the benefit of everyone. 
So what advice would you guys give to other educators looking to have these conversations and to engage students in the work of equity and race, rela race relations, specifically in New Hanover County? Yeah, so as a classroom teacher, and I think this could go for counselors, administration, other teachers, um, I think the advice I would give is that you need to engage. I, I don't know that, um, I don't know that it's an if question. It's a, you need to engage in these conversations. You need to look at each of your students as individuals with individual stories, individual hopes, individual dreams, individual tragedies, and you need to learn about them. Um, also expect to have to be honest about your own experiences um, because the only way to build relationships with your students, that's the first step. You have to build those relationships with your students in order to engage in these conversations. If you do not have a relationship, a mutual relationship, you won't have productive conversations. Students will be thrown off. They won't appreciate it. They'll think you're attacking them. So you need to start off building that relationship, learning about them and being honest about yourself and ready to be uncomfortable because they're not easy conversations, but they're necessary. And they grow you as a teacher and they grow your students together. And it can be a really impactful thing. Did you want to add to that, Chris? The teachers have to be comfortable. You have to be comfortable. Staff has to be comfortable in asking the questions and understanding that by not asking the question or having the conversation that sometimes your silence is misinterpreted as um, not caring or having, unfortunately, a negative um, view. So you have to be comfortable in having the conversation. Be comfortable with the uncomfortability that it might start with. But once you start, it's like second nature and you engage in these conversations every day, every class, and you learn so much as an educator and an individual. It's definitely evident that you guys have a great start and your students are lucky to have you. This summer, the district released a statement against systemic racism and outlined measures they were going to take to ensure that we celebrate our diverse community through growing, growing a sustainable environment that embraces inclusion, provides equitable opportunities, and affirms our humanity. New Hanover County Schools will continue to lead the way in equity and the inclusion of the student voice. Thank you to my guests and thank you to the audience for joining us for this month's Diversity Matters. If you have any questions or if you have a story idea for a future edition, please contact our Communications and Outreach Division at 910-254-4319. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next month on an all new Diversity Matters.